Today is the United Nations International Day of Democracy and many leaders have talked about the fact that democracy lies in the consciousness of people. So perhaps take time today to reflect on what it means to you and what it means for all those individuals around the world who don't have their democratic principles protected in the way that they should be. My name is Judge Iman. I'm a judge in England and Wales as part of Her Majesty's Court Service. I'm new to the judiciary, but the reason I'm talking to you today is because I'm part of the independent judiciary, which is a fundamental component of democracy and the rule of law, and we'll be discussing that today. We need to understand that these are ubiquitous terms. You open up the newspaper, you come across the term uh, rule of law, you come across the term democracy. So clearly, because they're so ubiquitous, they're a part of our society. We as individuals understand that they're important. We understand that they're the fabric of our society, but what do they really mean? So it's only when you try to really drill down and try to make the concepts more tangible do you start to understand how complex they are. But in essence, what the rule of law is, it's really about the supremacy of law. No one individual, no one institution is above the law, whether you're rich, whether you're poor, whether you're male, whether you're female, um, whether you're a government official or whether you're a private citizen, you will be held accountable to the same rules of law and you'll be held equally accountable. Now, it's important when we think about the rule of law that institutions in a society promote the rule of law. Now, that's slightly more complex, complex and there's a lot of factors that need to be taken into account. But in essence, what that is trying to, um, what is expected from institutions is that they have laws that are fair, that they have laws that are clear, they have laws that are transparent and that are applied equally um, across different courts across different systems so that there is due process. So how does that link with democracy? So when we think about democracy, we think about the majority rule. We all understand that we go, we vote, um, and that those that get the majority votes will end up um, governing and leading um, a democratic state. But beneath the democratic state, there is, de there is what we call democratic principles. And they underpin a democratic state and they're almost like an invisible force that ensures that a democratic state functions. So, for example, if we think about what are those democratic principles, one is an independent judiciary, another is an independent press, the third is civil society. So therefore you can't really have democracy unless you have the rule of law. So, if we think about the United Nations International Day of Democracy, we know that democracy is a core value for the United Nations. So how do they promote that? So the United Nations talk about promoting human rights and promoting people's freedoms, and that's quite right. So even though the rule of law is distinct from democracy and distinct from human rights, the three are completely interlinked that you can't really have democracy or human rights without the rule of law. So I've already explained that one of the democratic principles is judicial independence. So the role of judges in democracy is maintaining an independent judiciary. So what does that mean? So it means that judges should be able to exercise their jurisdictions, they should be able to make their decisions independently, fearlessly and without favouring any organisation or any individual or any institution. This is a fundamental component of democracy. Um, it's important that judges remain neutral, that they don't feel that they are going to be penalised for the decisions that they make. And we have a duty of care as judges to ensure that our decisions are open, they're transparent and they're well reasoned. But in a democratic state, institutions also have a duty to ensure that judicial independence is protected. Because I believe that when judicial independence is threatened, it's very quickly you'll feel, you'll see that a state will unravel. Actually, we're already coming out of a quite significant challenge. We've had the pandemic, we've had coronavirus, and what that has meant is meant that courthouses around the world have had to close and hearings haven't been heard. Now, um, 
the judiciary internationally and domestically has adapted. So for example, in the United Kingdom, we've moved our hearings online where we've been able to, to ensure that we don't have backlogs and that matters can be heard and people and justice can be done. But there are cases where that's just not possible, such as serious crime. So I think the ramification of coronavirus is still being felt and, um, and how the judiciary has had to be flexible to that. But if we're looking much further forward than that, then I think one of the challenges that's quite significant um, for the judiciary and, and for lawyers for, uh, and in legal systems across the world is really technology and AI. So we're seeing technology and artificial intelligence developing at a very significant and fast rate. Um, we're having, we're seeing developments and innovations which are incredible, but actually they're unprecedented. So the judiciary now will have to make decisions about matters where there's no societal consensus. We've never had this technology before. You know, we've got fintech, um, we've got technology in health now. Um, so this is new technology that's emerging. Um, people are dealing with it in very different ways. So ju judicial precedent, precedent is all built on a societal consensus. So we've got to very quickly as an international community decide, well, what is our societal consensus about technology and AR, AI, um, so that we as judges can make those decisions quite quickly um, and fairly as we move forward. I think also technology has presented platforms for social media. And I think with respect to democracy in itself, it's very important to know how news now spreads. So we all know that we have spin, we all know that we have fake news, we also have social media. Um, and I talk very much about the independence of the judiciary and I think people who have control over such platforms have to really be mindful that criticism that's levied at judges, that's unnecessary and unfounded, is actually attacking liberties of the fabric of our democracy. And I just think that, like I talked about a duty of care before, I think there's a duty of care to ensure that the judicial independence is something that is protected. And people are very aware that they report responsibly when they report on social media platforms. <laughs>